Welcome wrestling fans, it's your host JP. Uh, welcome to another edition of AW Mania. Today we're going to be talking about AEW Dynamite, their show that took place in Denver from the First Bank Center on March 4th, 2020. We're going to be recapping and discussing some of the directions that AEW may be heading in in, in the near future. Uh, it was a hell of an, an exciting show, uh, let's just get that right off the bat. But for your casual and hardcore wrestling fans, I, I would say that this was not your typical pro wrestling show. Uh, the show's main focus was not on um, in-ring com competition. There was maybe a total of two full-length matches that did go above and beyond the 10-minute mark. Apart from that, the show was more or less about getting over storylines, getting over feuds, and preparing for the future. Which is incredibly... Look, you've got to do that in the world of pro wrestling. If we're not preparing for the future, and we're just staying stagnant and doing rinse and repeat like other shows tend to do, uh, for example, uh, repeating the same match each and every single week. Uh, in the case of uh, what we had seen at one point, uh, Randy Orton versus Sheamus, or AJ Styles um, versus Ricochet, Cedric, and etc. Uh, it, it's, it's about building new stars, uh, and that's what really pro wrestling is. Because we, we can have a weekly show, and each week we put on the same guys, and one guy goes over one week, or girl goes over one week, and then the next week, it's it's a reversal of fortunes. Uh, it, it doesn't make much sense, to be quite honest. Um, we know who these talents are, we know who they are. You, you, you can continue to put over their feud and their... And, and their talent by having them come out and just have like a, a segment, uh, a conversation, an interview. They don't necessarily always have to be in the ring. Uh, the reason I say that is if it's always the same people that are getting in-ring experience and putting in the work, then what happens to the new, new boys and girls that are trying to come up in this business? They're stuck having to tour. They're stuck, stuck having to compete on uh, live events, house shows. But AEW doesn't have that. They, they don't have that uh, benefit of having a house show each, almost each and every single uh, day of the week. They've only got one weekly program. Uh, it's AEW Dynamite every Wednesday. And they've got to make the most out of the two hours that they have. And I find even on a non-centered um, rest pro wrestling um, show that they put on on a Wednesday, uh, they, they tend to do a phenomenal job at, at getting over their talent, at... Um, Making sure you care and you want to watch each and every single week uh, to see what happens. And, and this week was, was, was no exception. Uh, like I said, we had two good full-length matches and, and the rest was all about putting over your young talent. So how do, we, how do we start this show, right? Well, we're coming off the heels of an, an incredible pay-per-view, AEW's Revolution, which took place uh, on February 29th from the Wintrust Arena in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it was honestly, I know it's the beginning of the year, but it was one of the best pay-per-views so far. Uh, we could say within the uh, six-month time frame, right? Because uh, you can't go against what happened at, um, at AEW uh, Double or Nothing, which was a hell of a show. Uh, same thing with All Out, which was another great show. But AEW Revolution really focused on the in-ring talent. Uh, you had um, full-length great matches from Chris Jericho and Jon Moxley to the tag team, to what many are calling one of the greatest tag team matches in North America within the last decade, the Young Bucks versus Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page. You also had uh, an epic encounter with Nyla Rose and Chris Statlander for the women's title, for the AEW uh, World Championship. And among that, we had a, um, a blood feud, a grudge match between MJF and Cody Rhodes. All very exciting matches, but... Coming off a strong pay per view like that, this is your um, th th this is your your show after. This is the pay this is the event afterwards, and this is AEW Dynamite coming off the heels of a, of an, an exciting pay per view. So how do you kick things off? Well, the only way you kick things off on AEW Dynamite is by having your new AEW Dynamite champ uh, AEW, AEW champion John Moxley come out and cut a hellacious promo. Look. Chris Jericho's run as champion from all out all, uh, August, from from August to February was a hell of a run. It, it was one of the the better and smarter moves on AEW's part. Y you got a known guy as your champion. You got someone who's world renowned, an icon and a legend, and in many people's minds a goat. He continues to revolutionize his character almost each and every single uh, year or two. 
changing and changing the business for the better. And now we've transitioned from the Chris Jericho era to John Moxley. And in some cases, John Moxley is uh, a representation of our attitude um, era, of, of, of our attitude excitement that we had. And, and I'm talking in terms of like John Moxley is AEW's version of what Stone Cold Steve Austin was to the WWE. He comes out with his vest, he comes through the crowd, he does not give a damn, he will pick a fight against one man or five men, it does not matter. Uh, he's got that intensity in his promos, and, and he hits it right out of the park uh, when he comes out. He comes out and you feel, you feel the emotion from the audience. They love him. Uh, they're John Moxley fans, and they want to see him succeed because they know how good he is of a talent. So he, he, he comes through the crowd, uh, walks through celebrating with them taking in all the the energy that the audience is giving him tonight and Colorado was given all the energy tonight they were pumped they were excited they were booing they were cheering we heard chants that we have probably not heard uh, ever or within the last decade from an a from from any pro wrestling show so Moxley comes out gets in the ring he cuts a promo on how uh, a year ago he didn't know where he stood in the world of professional wrestling he thought um, after his tenure in WWE, it was it. He was going to take himself some time off, uh, recoup, uh, get back his passion that he once had because he had lost that from his time within the WWE. He, he got to see how the creative forces worked and he wasn't a fan of that. He loved having the freedom to just be who he is and he felt who he is is enough of a character to get himself over. And thus far, he, he, he's been 100% correct. Uh, there's been nothing to show that he has, he's been wrong in that case. John Moxley continues each and every single week to come out and cut hellacious promos with intensity and emotion, and this was no different. He stood in the middle of the ring and he expressed how much he loved this business and how much uh, it was the best decision he made in his career to come over to AEW because now he finally feels that this is what he's worked for. This is what he wanted to get into. His... Um, interpretation of what the WWE was going to be like was what he's feeling in AEW. He thought he was going to come in and run uh, roughshod all over the entire business and just be a standout character, but instead he was diminished to uh, the lunatic fringe, a goofy comedic character uh, who really had a hard time getting over because he just wanted to uh, get out. He wanted to explore and he wanted to go beyond just being a... a, a a comedy trope, something just used to be a punchline as a group. Uh, and that's what he was when he was in the WWE, a part of the Shield. You had Seth Rollins, who considered himself an architect, and he was pretty decent on the mic. You had Roman Reigns as your big guy, and then you just treated Dean Ambrose as your basic goofy goofball. And to see him come out and cut this emotional promo, and you felt it. Uh, the audience felt it. We all felt it. We heard it coming... Uh, through the way he just 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 the way he was speaking and saying that I love this business and I would do anything for it and if it wasn't for you guys I wouldn't be standing here as the AEW world champion and, and the truth is if it wasn't for us fans that wanted something different and myself included if it wasn't for all of us who uh, transitioned to New Japan Pro Wrestling and ROH and started following the Young Bucks Omega the Elite the Bullet Club um, and, and everyone else over in New Japan and started following their style of wrestling. And then this, the, the AEW wouldn't be as successful as it is today. Uh, but the reality is the WWE is, is in sync in terms of what the UFC is to mixed martial arts. When you think pro wrestling, you think one company, you think WWE. When you think mixed martial arts, you think one company, the UFC. Uh, but the truth of the matter is there are more than one companies in each and every single one of these domains. Uh, the UFC has competition from Bellator, One Championship, um, Pro Fight League, and, and, and WWE has competition from the likes of AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, ROH, TNA, uh, sorry, not TNA, Impact Wrestling. Now, I know each and every single one of those companies in terms of the revenue they generate, uh, the ratings they get, the fans that they have, uh, they're not in comparison yet, but but this, it's starting to grow, and AEW is starting to grow, and it's starting to grow rapidly, to be honest. AEW's ascension into the world of pro wrestling is reminiscent of when the UFC broke onto the scene and was taken under um, administration by Dana White and the Fertitas. They're expanding globally, and they're expanding quickly, because the fans are, are immediately 
taking to, 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 this, to this style of pro wrestling. We've seen the... Look, we're currently doing the documentary on the WWE Network of the Rootless Aggression Era. And the Rootless Aggression Era was all about giving the fans good pro wrestling matches. The Attitude Era was about... Um, intense storylines, over-the-top storylines, getting fans just to tune into the product each and every single week to see something that they're not going to see on the opposition. And AEW, and Jericho mentioned this in, in, a pro, in his promo yesterday, he said that this is the era of the John Moxley, this is the reckless abandonment era. Maybe this is. Because AEW in reality is reckless abandonment because we don't know whether it's going to succeed or it's not. This is all a trial. And thus far, it's succeeded. And as I said in comparison, I could see AEW expanding quite quickly within this year. Uh, by, by max 2022, uh, no, we're 2020. By max 2021, I wouldn't be surprised if AEW is legitimately, legitimately considered your number two co um, company. I'm not going to say number one because things can change and the WWE's direction and focus uh, is changing. We're starting to put a little bit more emphasis on real life storytelling and pro wrestling and getting back into in ring, uh, great in ring matches, which is an all in part thanks to AEW. If it wasn't for AEW showing up on the scene and for us fans demanding pro wrestling, for demanding something, demanding something that didn't seem silly or goofy to watch, uh, demanding something that by the end of the show we didn't feel, oh, I can't believe they did that. I honestly, they could have done anything else, but really they did that. So John comes out and he expresses all of this. He expresses how it's, this, this belt is not only his championship. That victory over Chris Jericho at AEW Revolution wasn't just his victory. It was the fans' victory. This was for us. This, this is big and he can see in the near future, he doesn't care who the challengers are. He's going to take them and whether it be one person or five people. And, and, and Moxley hits that promo out of the park. And this goes back to what Stone Cold said, said to Moxley when he said, John, don't you feel you're being, uh, you're holding yourself back and there's a lot more you can explore of your character. And, and John Moxley, since signing with AEW, has proven Austin right and proven Austin wrong by going way, way beyond uh, what many fans expected or, or thought. Uh, John was capable of and when I say many fans I mean those fans who didn't know who John Moxley was before Dean Ambrose and he's nailed it out of the park thus far so Moxley comes out cuts the promo saying that this is the title for us and he's going to take on all challengers it doesn't matter who it is including if it's a rematch with Chris Jericho cue music Chris Jericho and the inner circle come out and Jericho cuts a hell of a promo which is no surprise to anybody he tells Moxley that You've taken the title from me, and now that means you've got a target on your back. Uh, it's no longer about protecting me. It's now about beating you down, and the inner circle are going to run rough shot. There's nothing stopping them. I'm not going to hold them back. John Moxley, your life is going to be made a living hell because we are coming back for that title, and one of us wants to take that title from you. So good luck to anyone in AEW on the AEW roster who's looking at stepping up and fighting John Moxley. We don't care. There's only one group that deserves to have this title, and that's the inner circle. To Chris Jericho, even saying that tonight in your main event, it's going to be myself, Sammy Guevara, taking on Darby Allen and John Moxley in a tag team match. And John Moxley, I promise you, you will not be able to walk out on your own accord tonight. You will be stretchered out, and you will be beaten down and brutalized. And if not, you will not see Chris Jericho for 30 days, no, 60 days in AEW. So that, that, that like heightens the stakes now. And as a fan, that makes, sh that makes it way more exciting because now we don't know going into the main event. Is Chris Jericho going to lose? Is John Moxley going to get beaten down? Is John Moxley going to be able to stand? Because he initially said, Jericho, it's not about winning or losing. It's about whether or not John Moxley can, can walk out on his own accord tonight. And if John Moxley's capable of walking out on his own accord tonight, then that is going to suggest that Jericho's gone. So it leaves us... Uh, up in the air with wondering what's going to happen and we're not sure and that's what makes the business so fun is when you're not sure and that's what we want to have so Jericho cuts this promo leaving us all now wondering what's going to happen we, we wondered to begin with what would happen when Jericho lost the belt uh, would he stick around or would he take a hiatus from the company and either or uh, and it doesn't necessarily bug us uh, look if he takes a hiatus we understand he's got a band uh, he's, he's, he's a musical artist 
He's got some films that he appears in, and he's done a lot for AEW within the last, uh, since August, since the very announcement and inception of the AEW brand and company, Chris Jericho's been a part of almost everything and helping get it off the ground. So if he did decide to take some time off, it wouldn't surprise me. Look, the guy is, he's within almost 50, if not 50, and he deserves some time, right? So, so that's heading into your main event. We've got that hanging up in the air, whether or not John Moxley uh, is going to walk out on his own accord or not. Uh, that's that's leaving us uh, all excited for that. 